Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. This is your host, Thomas Sari from On the Hot Podcast. Today, this would be the Combat Series, Combat Series episode number 56 for you guys today. Of course, this episode is going to be coming out on all four of our platforms, our Instagram account, our Facebook account, our YouTube account, and our Apple Podcast account. So let's go ahead and dive into the first segment of the Combat Series this week. I'll be sharing my fight summary on the fight that took place in the main event of UFC 303 between Alex Pereira and Yuri Prochaska. So, in the main event of UFC 303 a few nights ago in the world of MMA inside the UFC world, Alex Pereira defeated Yuri Prochaska by knockout in the second round to successfully retain his light heavyweight championship in the, main, in the main event of UFC 303. Now, my fight summary on this fight that took place, I knew from the get-go when Bruce Buffer was introducing both the challenger and the champion for the main event of UFC 303, that intense stare down, I knew somebody was bound to get knocked out just like someone got knocked out in the first fight between Alex Pereira and Yuri Prochaska. But Alex Pereira left uh, UFC fans around the world watching that he is no doubt the better fighter between himself and uh, Yuri Prochaska and knocked him out of UFC in the main event of UFC 295 and months later proceeded to do it again in the main event of UFC 303. But looking at this, Yuri Prochaska is actually lucky that he escaped the first round without getting knocked out because when he got hit with that right-handed destruction that that Alex Pereira dropped him with the center of the canvas with just a few ticks left in the first round. I mean, if there was at least 20 to 30 seconds left in the first round, Alex Pereira could have knocked him out then and this fight wouldn't even escalate to the second round. But then you saw Alex Pereira in the second round hit him with that switch leg, leg kick then knock Gary Prochaska out and that's all she wrote. And Alex Pereira is still the king of the castle, still with his head held high, still holding that light heavyweight championship, coming off an impressive knockout victory now against Jamal Hill at UFC 300 in the main event. Now a few UFC pay-per-views later in the main event of UFC 303, knocking out Yuri Prochaska. The man is off to a hot start in his light heavyweight championship title defenses. And I, had, I saw... I mean, even though this fight was only two rounds, you can see the game plan for Alex Pereira was to land leg kicks. And when I covered the, my fight prediction last week, I was pretty concerned if Alex Pereira's toes had actually healed. I didn't know if he was going to be able to get off some leg kicks, but you saw if the fight was going to go on even longer, that was going to be the game plan for the night to land some leg kicks. Because in the first round, Alex Pereira was landing low leg kicks. In the first round, he was connecting with some left hooks. And even though the, we only really seen one full round of this fight, uh, one full round in this championship fight, Yuri Prochaska failed to do what I said last week that he needed to do if he wanted to have a chance against Alex Pereira. And that was coming to this fight with a grappler's chance. And I knew if he could, went into this fight like he did the first fight with only a striking mentality and not having a grappling game plan for Alex Pereira, that it was going to be a long night in the office for him. And he was going to come up short again and get knocked out again. And that's exactly what happened in the main event of UFC 303. Because you have to have at least a grappling, grappling game plan if you're going to defeat Alexander, uh, I mean, excuse me, Alex Pereira in the UFC. And he didn't ha even attempt a takedown in this second fight. I mean, I, and he had at least over two minutes scored in total of ground control in the first fight. I mean, was he was he really successful with the takedowns in the first fight? I mean, not really, but at least two minutes of ground control, you can at least take the film for what you had there and maybe sprinkle it into your game plan for the second fight. Didn't even see any type of wrestling attempts in this fight between himself and Alex Pereira. But looking at Alex Pereira, he now extends his win streak to four wins in a row he is now the fastest rising star in ufc history he's already a two division world champion in the ufc with just 11 mma fights and now has two successful title defenses like i just said a few moments ago against jamal hill and yuri prochaska now at the light heavyweight division so he's moving up and right now i have to say that alex Pereira right now is a pound for pound top three fighter in the ufc what he's doing is remarkable so what's next for Alex Pereira? Now, this is where a lot of people might get upset with my opinion. But I really would not mind seeing Alex Pereira possibly challenge himself, move up to the heavyweight division, 
and possibly get in line to fight John Jones for the heavyweight championship in the UFC. And regardless of whoever is the heavyweight champion when Alex Pereira does move up to the heavyweight division, which I think will be really soon, I think Alex Pereira really does have a chance to be the first ever three-division world champion in UFC history. Now, I believe a super fight between Alex Pereira and John Jones is very mouthwatering. No ditty. It's very entertaining. The idea of that fight is very entertaining. I'm not saying Alex Pereira will defeat the greatest of all time in John Jones, but I think Alex Pereira, the way out he, his striking is going, he would have to work on his grappling abilities if he wanted to get in the, and hang in the octagon with John Jones. But I think if with his striking ability and he could touch up on a ground game, get a, a grappling game going, he could give John Jones a run for his money. And I think that would be one hell of a fight at the heavyweight division between Alex Pereira and John Jones. Now, Alex Pereira needs a lot of training in the heavyweight division. He would have to have a first fight in the heavyweight division before going for the top dog, the greatest of all time, and John Jones. But I feel like that is intriguing. And with both of them being in their late 30s, I think we should get that now rather than later if we're ever going to get in the UFC. But, hey, if Alex Pereira wants to stay put in a light heavyweight division, I just don't think anybody can beat him. If he wants to challenge himself to be a heavyweight, I am serious. The man can, it really could be the first ever three-division world champion in the UFC. Now, what's next for Yuri Prochaska? Well, it's back to the drawing board for Yuri Prochaska. I'm not sure what's really next for Yuri Prochaska in the light heavyweight division. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yuri Prochaska is one hell of a fighter. He's a former light heavyweight champion in the UFC for a reason. And has now lost to Alex Pereira twice now. And seems to me that Alex Pereira does have a lock on the light heavyweight division right now in the UFC. And with his fighting style, I don't think Alex Pereira is going to drop the light heavyweight championship right now in the UFC. And when a fighter has your number in combat sports, they have your number. And I just feel like it, even if Yuri Prochaska got in position again to be in championship contention, if Alex Pereira has a title, he would just get knocked out again like he did in the first fight and the second fight. But don't get me wrong, Yuri Prochaska is one hell of a fighter. 30 wins, 26 victories come away of knockout. He's only lost two fights in, his, in, in the last nine years, and that being both to Alex Pereira. So that should tell you how great of a fighter Yuri Prochaska really is. But I, I don't know. I mean, maybe a fun, it would be a fun fight between himself and Jamal Hill uh, in the future of this light heavyweight division. But I don't know. I, I really don't know what's next for Yuri Prochaska. As long as Alex Pereira is the world champion, there's no point of really putting yourself in championship contention again if you're Yuri Prochaska. Because it, if we see in a trilogy, which I don't think we should, because both fights have ended in the second round, I, I just feel like the same outcome would happen if he doesn't have a grappling approach. And he was supposed to have one in the second fight, then have it. So I think it's time to move on officially from a possible trilogy between Alex Pereira and Yuri Prochaska. But that is my fight summary on the UFC 303 main event between Alex Pereira and Yuri Prochaska.